kind of framework I love to, to think about when building a consumer product is stated versus revealed preference. And the, the best example of this is, is Henry Ford's famous quote, if I had asked my customers what they want, they would want a faster horse. Yeah. And so I think the kind of way to think about it is people actually don't really know what they want sometimes. Like they, they, in, in certain instances, yes. So like if it's like a very like well-defined thing, but with new technology and new products, uh, you, it's your job to actually come up with the product and then be able to actually solve it with the consumer by maybe having an insight into like what their problem is or what the revealed preference of, of kind of like what they, they would use or uh, do. Um, but stated versus revealed preference is also something where people like to tell you what they think you want to hear. Like it's just natural human behavior. <laughs> so you go onboard your 400 people in, in crypto having worked in crypto for almost a decade. And you're like, hey, check this out. You've, you've said you're really interested in decentralized social. Like it's imperative that we get there. Like you're really pro Web3 and crypto. That's the state of preference. The reveal preference of all these folks is they've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of Twitter followers that they worked really hard to build that audience. Why would they go spend any amount of time on a new protocol where they might have 100 followers, right? Outside of like pure ideological alignment, which yeah. there are a few people in the world like that, but actually very few. The revealed preference is what people, people have a limited amount of time. So what they're going to do is they're going to use where they have their biggest audience. And, until, by the way, at some point they might lose that audience because they, they get banned from Twitter. Right? Then they're riled up of like, wait, I wish I had actually been building this kind of in a protocol where maybe I can control it. And so where I think what we've we found is the revealed preference of users is to find the people who don't have as much invested in another platform, whether that's Twitter or YouTube or, or Discord, and actually kind of target them. And when they start to build an audience on Farcaster, where they now have more followers or, or kind of an audience size that's bigger on Farcaster than they have on a legacy platform, they've converted to becoming like a full Farcaster maxi in the sense that this is now more valuable to them than that other platform. And, and my friend Eugene Way has an amazing essay. It's very long, wow. but it's worth reading. Status as a service. Yeah, it's a great. One. That actually specifically calls this point out, where you can almost think of it as, um, and it's like a rough analogy that is, it's like immigration, right? So it's like if you're if you're in the, uh, the upper class or the nobility of the the original country, you probably don't have as much incentive to leave. Whereas if you're kind of like at the the bottom of the the hierarchy in terms of status or economics or whatever. You're, you're more inclined to say, hey, maybe I'll move to the US, like that land of opportunity, right? Like the new thing. And when you get there, um, you start out like everybody else, but as you build status in that new area, then you know, you 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 actually it's it's a much more dynamic environment where now you can actually become one of the larger creators on this platform. And so Eugene talks about TikTok in the sense that each new big social media platform mints a new set of stars. And so I, I think we're in the early stages of that with Farcaster, but we have you know several people who have you know five seven thousand followers now on Farcaster, having just a result of having been there early and active, that is much bigger than their Twitter following. And so this becomes their default place to do distribution, which if, if there's some semblance of quality there, can actually maybe kickstart a little bit of a flywheel where now other people are like, oh, these people are actually kind of interesting. I'm gonna actually start using Farcaster because it's differentiated content and, and a graph than what I would get on Twitter. And, and so that, that, that's, I think where it's, it's taken us a while to get there with a bunch of mistakes in between, but like figuring out like the reveal preferences, find the people that traditional social media is underserved, but potentially are diamonds in the rough, and then actually get them to start using Farcaster and, and, and highlight that content and, and, and stuff like that. And so that's effectively what we've done over the last two and a half years. And if I think about like what we need to do over the next year, it, it's basically scale that significantly. And, and, and so there will be probably a new set of tactics that we need to think about.